King is going to be helping us with some business coaching. He's calling it um, playing, to the, playing buzzer. to the buzzer. <laughs> and um, a year ago, uh, we also had Charlie King here as part of a month of leadership skills for entrepreneurs. So I'm just really, really excited to have Charlie back, and I plan to get a lot out of it. Thanks, Charlie. Thanks so much, Leslie. Um, I think. Everybody in the room has met me before. Um, we haven't met before. Uh, Hi, I'm Lana. Hi, Lana. <laughs> My name is Charlie King. Um, it's nice and to meet you. so it's nice to meet you too. Thanks for being here today. Oh, I'm pretty excited. <laughs> so, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a leadership development coach. So I work with individuals, um, often entrepreneurs and solopreneurs, who are looking to develop their leadership. Either they're running up against the what what level they're at, and they want to take into the next step or they notice that they need some shoring up or some support about their existing leadership levels. And uh, that's who I work with. Um, I'm so excited to be here today. I really want to uh, thank you guys, and Leslie, especially for the invitation to come. Um, playing to the buzzer, buzzer uh, is such a great topic. And I think it's a great topic for everyone, whether it's somebody who's a solopreneur, an entrepreneur, somebody who uh, works inside a company or works for themselves, people who uh, have from all walks of life, when they're looking to develop something, create something, or achieve something, knowing what it's going to take to get from where, here, where you are here to where that next space is, where that next level of growth is, is always the biggest challenge. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for coming. <laughs> so I want to start out with a, a basic question. And I apologize, I'm making the assumption that everybody in the room, if you're not in your own business, are up to something big. Because otherwise, I'm not sure why you'd be here. So the big question is, who thought this was a good idea? Who thought this was a good idea? Oh my goodness. There are so many things that we could do in life. There are so many industries out there. There are so many jobs available to people in the world. Different ways to make a living where you could go and clock in at 8 o'clock in the morning and clock out at 5. And that would be the beginning and the end of your day. Who thought this was a good idea that we'd strike out on our own, choose something different, and start to take on fulfilling on a vision that we'd created for ourselves? What I've noticed about entrepreneurs and solopreneurs, people who take on their own vision and take on whatever they're trying to create, is there's a big difference, or there's more, maybe more than one, between going to work for somebody else and working for yourself. What are some things you guys notice that's different about working for yourself versus working for someone else? We do everything. We do everything. We. Do everything. We do everything. It's, uh, <laughs> it's not an uncommon lament. We have all kinds of things. So regardless of what you're doing as part of your business, like the product or the service that you provide, it's not your only role. What are some of the other roles that you hold in your business? So what I heard was financials, supplies, procurement. What else? Sales. 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 <laughs> sales, sales, sales. Might be a consistent conversation. What else? Money. Money. And what, what about money? Cash flow. Cash flow. Uh-huh. Motivation, yeah, that's a big one, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yep. We create the rules. And so, what's the, how, what if you were going to look under the category of we do everything? What kind of role is that? Leadership. So leadership, okay. Carving a path. You, the question I, was, what's different than working for someone else? Mm -hmm. So is it is it vision? Could be. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Well, you, have to have your own. you guys have such a, 
Oh, I'm sorry. Say again, please. You said you have to have your own because, you know, if you don't have a boss, you know, if you have a boss, you have to use their vision. Absolutely. I love it. You know, we're, we're really moving into those places where it's like the bigger end. What's some of the smaller stuff we get caught up in? What's the small stuff that's just like, oh my God, if I worked for someone else, I wouldn't have to deal with this. Take out the garbage. Take out the garbage. What else? Ah, nice. Insurance. Insurance, yep. Stock. Stocking. Or a paycheck. Paying the rent. Payroll. Rent. Collection. Collections. Right. <laughs> you know, customer service. Yeah. Right? Not just providing it, but customer service about providing it. Training. Service. Training. I think discipline is different when you're, I, maybe that's, that's not a little thing, but sure. discipline is different when you work for yourself than when you work for someone else. Who's self-imposed, self-imposed. Self, self-discipline. Big deal, sure. So this is such a great list. And what I notice is that none of this actually isn't part of your business. It's actually to some extent or another, whether it's stocking the bathroom, to vision, to procurement, sales. We didn't talk about manufacturing, which I know Alice is involved in manufacturing as well. It's actually producing the product or actually delivering the service like Bill or like Karen do, right? Like actually delivering the service for which you receive your money. But even in all of that, this is actually all part of your business to some extent or another. These are things that are always drawing your time and attention. And they're drawing your time and attention as part of your business and as part of what we've chosen. So if that were all it was, that would be one thing. What are some of the other things that compete for your attention? Let's change it. Okay. How about family? Yeah, let's take a look at what other things there are. Yeah. So I heard change. I heard family. I heard technology. Technology. Right? What else? Competition. Home or household. What part of home or household? Well, there's cleaning, there's repairs, right. there's all those cleaning. home issues that, apart from the people of the family, there's that. And then there's also extended family. I don't know what that family one means, but right. I think about the garden to take care of a lawn tomorrow, right. the animals to take care of, the garden, you know, just the cars to get fixed, right. oil change. Right. Cars. And then there's those significant yes. others, and they want time and energy with you. Know. It's awful, isn't it? Yuck. Spouse. And for those with children, let's not even get started with children. <laughs> children are just so such a time suck. Okay. They're the fun part. <laughs> nice. They are the fun part. They are the fun part. Thanks for saying that. So what else uh, competes for your attention? Employees. Employees. Nice. Boys in your head. Ooh, nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Facebook. Thanks for saying so. Maybe you could fit into one of those lists somewhere. Self doubt. Mm, nice. Friends. Oh, we have friends. <laughs> yeah. Well, right, and some distractions are good, and some distractions are... Yeah. Also, community, if you're involved in things in your community, then those also compete for your time. If you want to be a good steward, you have to give, and it takes time away from you. Right. So, 
what we're really take, starting to get a glimpse at is what the level of the number of things that are competing for our attention all the time. Have you ever woken up in the morning and been like, oh my goodness, I can't believe how many things I have to get done. And some are over here at work, and some are here over there in personal life, and then there's the ones that sort of do that magical crossing over that you can't figure out whether they're actually that work. Is that work or personal life? <laughs> oh, God, it's just kind of fun. <clears throat> Absolutely. And it's that way for you, and it's that way for me, and it's that way for everybody in business. What's your experience when you notice how many things are drawing on your attention? What's your, like, what are you present to or like, what goes through your mind when you're present to all the things that are drawing for your attention? Prioritizing. Prioritizing. Overwhelm. I start making lists. Yeah. Oh, list makers. Yeah, list makers. Uh, it really, there ought to be a 12 step program, right? <laughs> so there was lists. There was prioritizing. I'm sorry, what was it? somebody said? Um, overwhelm. Overwhelm. Yeah. Yep, there's overwhelm. Don't get that. Did we ever get that one? Yeah. Never. Well, what's important and what's not, too? Oh, so there's the decision making process about what's important and what's not. Decision fatigue. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's good. Good. Decision fatigue. I didn't know there was such a thing, but as soon as I knew it, I knew I had it. <laughs> right? right? Exactly. Right? And who hasn't been there like, oh, I have to make another decision. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Why can't it all be black and white? Well, the, the decision fatigue is all mixed up with the self-doubt that I, I think Anna brought up. Yep. You know, if I make this decision, will I be repeating this decision two minutes later, or will I be sorry about it, you know, two days later? I have that problem with menus. If I choose this, I can't have that. Exactly. Why or you can choose I, to have it all. So why could I, how did I think I could do this? Why didn't I just go get an eight to five, where I can clock in, do my one function, and let somebody else worry about all that other stuff? Exactly. Why can't I just let all of that stuff go? Absolutely. Thank you all for sharing, really. And thank you all for being human. This is not a unique experience. And all it's really speaking to is that you guys are up to some big stuff. You wouldn't be part of this community. You wouldn't be in this room. And you certainly wouldn't be in business for yourself or up to the projects that you are if you weren't up to big stuff. And that's what I'm curious about. So if there was any one thing that was the most challenging part, the thing that gets in the way more than anything to you moving your business forward, what's the one thing? What's the one thing that's the most challenging part between you and moving your business forward? If there was any one thing What about time? Got it. If only there was enough time. I just find myself really not knowing what I should be spending my time on. Like, you know, what is the most critical <laughs> fatigue? <laughs> yeah. So, and I would say working on the business, not in the business. Yeah. yeah it's, um, because that's that when you're, that's, you can say, well, I'm in the business of this, but then the big job is the business, not the other part. So is it about, can you say a little bit more about that? Oh, well, okay. Like, um, if you're a business owner, you're supposed to be working on the business all the time, rather yes. than in the business. So, for example, if you're, if you're in insurance, then you're, you know, that's a, your business is, you know, working on the business of insurance and so you get insurance for businesses. Bracelets, you know, in the business is making the bracelets, but on the business is so the support structure and the infrastructure. 
going okay. out and marketing and all that and showing them off, that's all cool. But you know what? When nobody else is there, you have to sit down and you have to cut them out. You have to think up the patterns. You have to do the tracing, the cutting, and the gluing. But right. I'll tell you what, I can find a lot of other things I'd rather be doing than those things. The that's what she's, I thought you liked doing the manufacturing. It does, but you know what? After so many hours a day, <laughs> it's back to the, one of the problems, like she just said, is the business of the business itself. Right. Yeah. So, so it's office. finding the balance. Yeah. It sounds like it, it sounds like it's finding the balance uh -huh. versus being in and on. Right. Uh -huh. The balance of in and on. Providing the service is often easier than running the business. It's you. Yeah. 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 Right. Maybe for insurance, you know, they're, they're running the business is selling that insurance policy to somebody. But then, say you've sold a bunch of them, now you got to sit down and write them up and do all the preparation and all the things involved in the actual preparation of those policies themselves. Everything, every business, like like her, her books, you know, selling them and promoting them and all that. That's one thing. But there's the sitting down and writing that book. Yes. You know, it's all that. That's the real hard part. I see, and it actually gets the other. I think providing the legal services the easy, the harder part is the billing and the, the business, the administration. Right. And everybody's got it, right? Like everybody's got their little, like, got a little yeah. twist about what it is that catches them. It's like, um, it's like the barb on a piece of metal. It's like the the errant piece of food on the floor, that, that hard thing that's underneath your sock while you're in the kitchen. What is that, right? That thing that catches you. And everybody's is a little bit unique. But what we've made here, what I notice is that we've all made this incredibly robust list. And it was like it was at the edge of, like at the front of our tongue, all the things that we take on, all the roles that we have, and everything that gets in the way. Well, no wonder then that it's hard to feel like you're moving your business forward. And I think that there isn't any business owner that doesn't feel that way. In light of that, if all of this was out of the way, if the 12 different jobs you feel like you hold within your business, if all the distractions were out of the way, we're just going to let go of those for a minute. I promise at the end of the hour, you can pick them back up. You can have them all back. You can tuck them away back in your bag. You put them, you know, take, you know, the moment we take our phone off silent, I'm pretty sure that between all of us, we will have received 20 emails and four or five voicemails and maybe three or four texts, because I know how Bill is with his texting these days. He's kind of prolific that way. But if you were going to just let go of them for this hour, what is the one thing that you would take on to move your business forward? Well, I like the people-to-people -people part. That's what I do. I mean, they've been, they've gone and I'm in insurance, but okay. the, you said, what? why did I think this was a good idea? Uh, originally, it was uh, because I needed a way to support my family because my husband's so ill, I could, nobody was going to hire me. So I needed a way to be a, a, an entrepreneur so I could take care of my husband and my mother and make a living. Yes. But the reason I've done insurance since 1980 is it isn't that it's insurance. What I really love about what I do is I really do help people. I am there when they have a real crisis, a death, their house is on fire, they've had the sewer back up into their house, right. you know, a tree right. falls on it. Right. I mean, I really um, feel like I take good care of my clients. Yeah and that I'm part of their family, and I, and I help them protect their assets, and I help them look after that. So I'm kind of like a mother hen. Mm -hmm. I think everybody would probably tell you I'm like a mother hen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, so I think that's why I really like enjoy what I do. Not that I like about insurance itself. It's what happens when I'm needed. So I like the feeling that I'm needed, nice. and that I'm there when they need me. So what I heard you say was, is that part of your vision, like what you've really spoken to is like the vision of your business, like to be, and to help others, right? right. Oh, absolutely. And I love the thanks for the motherhead piece. Yeah. So my question is, is from there, from your vision, if it's in being in service of others or helping others, mm -hmm. what's the, if you could choose one thing that would grow your business in the next six months, in the next year, by the end of the next calendar year, what's the one thing? What's the one thing you would grow? Uh, I would grow the 
well, what's happened, and it's funny because Karen and I were talking about this, but you know, there's a huge shift coming in health insurance. Yes. Huge, it's enormous. However, with the aging of our population, which is most of us in this room, there's also, uh, I just took a class in this, there's a huge dynamic that where I could help people free of charge be able to make a good decision on how when they go to get Social Security, they could uh, change how much Social Security they get by literally thousands of dollars a month if they understood the laws to Social Security. And I'm just finishing a six month course on that. So how would that be reflected in the next goal for your business? I, I want to give uh, classes here on that for people to come so that they can make good decisions nice. uh, as they're getting ready to register for Social Security. Nice. And what would that result in? Uh, for me, from a business standpoint? Yes. Well, um, we we'll get my name out for one thing. Okay. I have more clients because I do property and casualty. I do a lot of commercial. Oh, so go ahead. And I do life and disability. Right. Uh, one of the ways that there's going to be a gap in there, and one of the ways I help with that gap is through is through annuities, real short-term annuities that take care of a, okay. a gap. Okay. So in there. I'm going to actually interrupt the the thing. without without needing to know all the details. So what I heard you say is the next. If you were going to choose any one thing mm -hmm. to move your business forward, mm -hmm. what I've heard you say is that I'd be providing classes which would increase my exposure. Mm -hmm. And what would that result in? Increase in, increase in income to my family. Got it. By how much? Uh, oh, probably by, it jumped up by another third. By a third? Yeah. So increase income by a third. So that would be the one thing if there was any one thing that you could choose to move your business forward. Got it. Thanks for sharing. Do you have a time frame for that? Uh, yes, October 15th. By October 15th? Yes. So in the next little over a month? Yes. Giving classes, increasing exposure, and increasing your income by a third? Yeah, yeah it will. It's a year long. Uh, the, the increasing income by a third will probably be a year long process. So but the class has to be done now. Okay. And the reason is, is because the changes in the law are coming right along with the changes in the law of health insurance right. and Medicare and Medicare supplement, which is the other thing I do. So it sounds like these are milestones. Right. These are milestones to this. Right. But it sounds like the, the you're about a year out, so 9 of 2014. Right. Got it. Thanks for sharing. So if there was any one thing for the rest of you, if there's any one thing that if you could let all that stuff go for right now that you would take on to grow your business, what would the one thing be? Realistically or idealistically? Well, if we're going to play realistically, it's probably not a fun conversation to have. Well, I'd like to, you know, I'd like to be 15% more productive. My, my invitation, I'm sorry. I, I, my invitation is, is like swing big. Like what would be worthwhile? What would be worthwhile, worth your time, if you are the one to choose and the one to decide how it's gonna go? What would make it worthwhile to go through all the heck that we go through to own businesses and run them? that would be a result that would be worth fighting for, worth putting all those things to the side, the emptying of the garbage, the cleaning of the toilet for a little while, and prioritize and be in action around one goal in your business. What would the one goal be? Me? <laughs> yeah. Well, when I, I asked real estate versus idealistic because, you know, idealistically, I would bring a team of like five people. You know, that's like a goal. I would just get like five people that are really good at doing what I don't do and coordinate the team to do that. But it's not a real it's not it's idealistic, it's not realistic because I don't have resources to hire people Got it. at this point. So well, could I could bring partners I suppose, but I but you know the only way I realize now for me to get where I want to get is to have a lot of really good people working with me and a really good space to do it in. So well, that's beautiful, right? So can you hear it? In, in your model, it's actually the opposite way around. 
Where in this model it was, we were going to do this to this to increase my income by a third. It kind of sounds like the end for you is actually support structures. And for support structures, you actually know exactly what it is. Do you notice that when she said five people, there wasn't a question about whether it was going to be four or six. It was actually five people. Actually, pretty clear, you know exactly what it is. So what would it, if you're creating this result, what would it, what are the milestones between to get, to get, to the, to get from yeah. here to there? I don't know what that is. Okay. Well, I heard you say that it, it's a matter of resources. It's a matter of affording five people. Yeah. That's the instructor. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the pieces. Uh, okay, so support structure. So increasing support structure, and some in here, somewhere in here, there's increased resources, right? So there's so that so that's definitely one place. Who else? Don't make me call on you, Leslie. <laughs> yes, Leslie. So again, this gets back to decision fatigue because Jason and I have come up with lots and lots of good ideas, but one recently that really feels good and right, I don't know if it's the one, right. um, is creating a free online community for all businesses on Bainbridge. Okay. Kind of like a business alternative to Island Moms. That has, you know, forums where people are communicating with each other and, you know, where um, creating little ads for each other, you know, get your hands slapped. Got it. So an online business community. Nice. But for businesses on Bainbridge. You know. For businesses on Bainbridge, yeah. right. Uh, or nearby. But isn't that, don't you kind of have that sort of started on the Melba Facebook page? Isn't that? This would be this would be going beyond membership at office expats. This would be, you know, building a free online community. So you wouldn't have to become a member. All yeah. kinds of businesses. Yeah. All business, yeah. So, so like inviting all businesses on Bainbridge to participate. So maybe okay. could something like that happen by way of BBC, which isn't a real formal group that people have to join, but that's where the online part comes in. Yeah. So. Page for the BBC kind of people, Bainbridge Business Connection. Isn't that kind of what the BBC? It would definitely overlap with what BBC is doing. It'd be yeah. kind of like but BBC, but online. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it, the Bainbridge Business Women, and you know, there's a lot of people on Bainbridge that are kind of trying to do that. So it would be kind of knitting all of that together. Oh. Right. So they're creating an online community. Right. Nice. So obviously, people are involved and excited about the conversation. How would you monetize that, Leslie? Um, it would be a funnel for office expats. It would have its own value to the people that are in it, but it would also be, um, you know, a way of finding out who's interested in connecting and then gradually having ways of, you know, um, offering memberships, offering services, offering resources. Thanks for sharing. Bill, how about you? Boy, I've been wrestling with this. I thought about, you know, doing more presentations. And like just before I arrived here, I did a presentation for continuing education for attorneys and CPAs. And I got a call from Casper, Wyoming, but a guy wanted me to value a sawmill there. So uh, I think more of that, but trying to do it in a more controlled, organized fashion. This is more presentations? Um, Getting, getting the word out or presentations out okay. in a format. And I don't really know how to do that. That's okay. So it sounds like greater exposure for you. What would that, what would that result in? Uh, just more business. Business. more business. More business. Okay. So somewhere in there, presentations that would result in more business. Mm -hmm. How much more business would you like to create? Oh, probably about 25%, 30% more. And what I'm really after is get more the more interesting. I like interesting situations. So. No. Oh, okay. Excellent. Alice, want to play? Oh, my.
mine's too easy since I haven't really gone out and, and taken mine to any stores. I can just say, uh, take the ones I've got sitting at home in a drawer and maybe get off my butt and actively try to sell them. So that's all I need to do. I just kind of haven't done that because I sort of got involved with some other things that I'm having fun with. So all I have to do is motivate myself to do that, and then I'm getting around to it. So mine's just okay. really easy. <laughs> Okay. I know what that gets. Someone to do it on a mission. You should get like a high school student to sell your. Christmas. I got one of those. <laughs> I just again, I'd have to have him do it. I just. <laughs> I, I just have to go out and do some things I already need to do. So, yeah. Well, we we'll got it. So and and just like it, so here's it's so great, Alice. Right? Just to normalize it. Is there anybody who has gets where Alice is? Show of hands. Anybody get where Alice is? Anybody been there before? <laughs> Got it. It's always, but it's always the problem. It's always the stick and the carrot in a business. If you're whether you're manufacturing something or you're offering a service like you know you and I do, it's always the stick and the carrot. Right. And that's what happens is it's always trying to keep the funnel full. Right. And then as what happens is as soon as this funnel starts being full, now you're dragged off doing all the stuff. Right. Be, all the all the stuff that you need to do to take care of it. Right. To, and then what happens? And, and then your funnel gets empty, and then you're back out again trying to get the funnel full again. Oh, got it. So you sort of do the the yeah. feast and then famine roller coaster. So you got to fill the funnel, fill the funnel, and it's full. And oh my goodness, we have to take care of all those people that we filled the funnel with. And then while we're just so paint, spending all our energy doing that, we're not filling the funnel. Right. So you have that, yeah. A swing, and it's uh, it, it's uh, actually uh, painful. Yeah. Yeah, because you look and there's no one to call. Well, it's just that you don't have the business coming in. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So it's trying to trying to kind of find a way to, so that the so you have that e so it's e so it's fairly even because in my industry uh, you well obviously you've got to take care of your people because if something disastrous happens to them and I'm not there for them I mean what does that do to my reputation? Right. Yeah. Got it. So. It's tied into how you see yourself within the business, right. which, given that it's our own business, it's us, right? right? Right. Also, so familiar as a business owner. So for Alice, it's around selling and creating something. So Why? she's got. So she's stuck with keeping up with creation, especially if they have demand grows. Yes. Right. Absolutely. So why? Why do we care? Why do we care about goals? Why does it even matter? Because when you don't meet them and you wake up in the morning and those things that you know they needed to be done yesterday, you didn't even make any steps to getting them. Now it's just really nagging. And so there's that guilt, that self-imposed guilt. So is this with a goal or without a goal? Oh, for having goals that you didn't make take any steps to meet. Oh, got it. So, for you, having a goal isn't a good idea because then you just wake up and beat yourself up for not having done it. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's easier not to have a goal. Pathetically sounding, yes. Okay. <laughs> What's the cost of not having a goal? Oh, you're just so never getting out of bed. <laughs> never getting out of bed. Like, the covers are just fine today. I'll be okay. <laughs> Kind of like a log bumping down the river, and you go bang into this shoal, and you sit there for a while, and then bang <laughs> into this shoal, and you sit there for a while. Yeah, it's like, oh wait, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go hang over in LinkedIn. Yeah. Oh wait, maybe it's over here in Facebook. Wait, there's an <laughs> online community. Where's that online community? Maybe it's over here. Maybe got a tidal wave. You know, maybe the the glacier melts, and you've got the spring runoff, and all of a sudden you're trying to get your head above water. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. right. Yeah. Where you're jumping from one thing to the next, yeah. constantly. What and what? When you're doing that, what what uh, what are you present to when you're doing that? Oh, you're just frantic. Yeah. You're always paddling kind of like crazy. Yeah, paddling like crazy, feeling frantic. What else? 
Well, I would go beyond Alice. I mean, I totally agree with the, you know, waking up in the morning and then saying, oh, I didn't do it or whatever. But for me, it's more than that because it's almost like being on a mission or something and you feel that you're not really fulfilling the thing that most satisfies you in life and mm -hmm. that may help the most people by not doing this thing. And even if it's just a really dog shit simple thing that has to be done as part of a greater mission, you know? Right. Yeah, to do that. Right, so there's the no goal and not have to face it, and then there's the goal and Karen? For me, the and Karen? For me, the without goal. I think if without a goal, I'm very inefficient. Yeah. When you have, uh, I could look, as you said, you can waste a half a day on social media. You right. have a goal for me, whether it's in usually in a list and I can check them off and I get them done because I need pressure. And right. having a list is pressure on myself to get something accomplished. Got it. So goal have, without a goal, you become inefficient in what you're doing. Because uh -huh. uh -huh. you don't have a clear direction because you have so many choices and so many distractions, as you said at yeah, the right. beginning, that you can go to. Right. Without a goal, then you're not steering towards one particular path and committing. Right. You're like, dabbling. Imagine success is here, and you're here. If we don't know what success looks like, success could be over here, or success could be over here, or it could do one of these squirrelies, and it could be here. But if we don't know what if we don't know where we're going, then we don't know what actions to take. Doesn't it feel good to put a line through that thing on your list? Yeah, because you've done it. Nice. What's, what's the goal for you, Ann? Do you know? It's okay if you don't. Yeah, I know. It's just, um, I couldn't also articulate. One time I set to do that my mission is to uh, support people in opening their eyes, their uh, minds, and their hearts. Right. Got it. Personally, would do that through my teaching and my writing. Got it. So we have a vision, then we have a vehicle. Which leads us to a deliverable. So who has a vision? Who has a vision for their business? Written one down way back when, dusty drawer in a folder somewhere. Does anybody have a vision for, for their business about what they were going to create? Which, can you give me the, the nugget about your vision? Um, well, of course, I'm blanking right now, but um, you know, it has to do with community being what we need to achieve our greatest potential. Who else? Anybody else have a vision? Thoughts? I was to help. Uh, this became particularly true when I had children was to help people protect uh, their families and protect their assets and what they've uh, what they've built for their lives. So if you get down to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, I'm down on two, safety, protection. Protecting families. Protecting family. Yeah. Protecting family. So, beautiful, right? I want to go back to Anne's moment. So, Anne's got a vision. Leslie's got a vision. Would you remember my name first to myself? Yeah, it's Linda. Linda. Uh -huh. Linda's got a vision. Anne's got actually the vehicle by which she could measure her success. I would actually put a bigger one in there, but it's so big uh, it can't be done by one person, but it's to help end suffering of various sorts on the planet. So that's really huge, but. Thanks for, thanks for taking that on. <laughs> it's laughable in a way, but it's not my problem. Without a vision like that, it doesn't make work 
I don't know if it's worth playing the game. I remember the old days of NDS training. The big thing was to help add world hunger, and they had this whole hunger project thing, you know. So some people do take on big things. Yeah. It doesn't mean they'll succeed, but it's worth pursuing. It sure is. Yes, Karen. If we're doing big visions, I have lots of those. Promote justice, create justice. Okay, is this part of your business? Is this a vision for your business? She's an attorney, I would think so. Well, I know that she's 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 okay. got her she's got her fingers in a number of different places. I was just curious which one this one is. For any of them. Okay. For any of the things I want to do, uh, justice is important to me. So. And did you say promote justice? Or create justice. Create justice. Thank you. Yeah, that's good for seniors. I mean, that's really an important part. Create justice. So. Judges do it too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So creating justice. So having a vision is incredibly powerful because it's the thing that calls you forward. But knowing how we're going to take that vision and, uh, and know that we're in line with that is how is it going to be applied in the world? Now what I heard Anne say was open eyes, mind, and heart, and, and suffering. She said that she wants to do that through her teaching and writing. Protecting family, and that is by? Basically, I help people through insurance policies. Got it, so you provide policies. Right. right. Provide policies. Or provide, provide the protection. Provide protection, got it. Is what it really boils down to. Leslie, community great, fulfilling on its greatest potential. Mm -hmm. What's the vehicle through which that gets delivered? Well, right now in my life, it's it's co-working. It has okay. been co-housing in the past. Uh huh. So it's co-working. Got it. And creating justice. One-on-one -on -one solution. So providing solutions, helping people solve problems. Whether okay. you're doing that as a lawyer or as a judge or as a business, it's about helping them solve, helping people solve problems. Okay. So it's one-on-one -on -one legal services? <clears throat> well, it's one person at a time. It's not okay. to say one-on-one -on -one legal services. It's one person at a time. Okay. To enhance the greater good. Got it. I want to get my cuffs to where some real big high-end company sees them and thinks they're so cool they want to buy the company from me and hand me a pile of money and I can just retire on that. I totally self-serving on it. Perfect. So nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. I'll help people once they have enough money. <laughs> That's not true. You're helping people already. Right? I'm pretty sure you're in service you are so not all waiting. the time. <laughs> So the, if where we're looking is around taking your vision, so the question where we all started this question from was, if you could let all the rest of that stuff go, the emails, the texts, the social media, the 12 jobs that we cover, and the everything else that's pulling for our attention, we could let those things go. We said, what's the goal that you would take on? We started to look at some goals, and they got kind of, we kind of got into a conversation about visions, what visions people had. So if we're looking to be in alignment with what we're trying to create, whether it's opening eyes, mind, and heart, creating a community and taking it to its greatest potential, protecting families, or creating justice, what goal, what measurable goal in the world would we create for our business? What measurable goal? Now, I heard you say you, uh, that would allow you to increase your income by 30% in a year. How many new clients would that require? That I don't know. I would have to actually, I haven't worked that out. Okay. Right. So would that be a way to measure the success of your business in line with your vision for the business? It would be a way to work back from that 30%. Yeah. Right. So you could backtrack it and figure it out. Right. Got it. So you'd have then a, have a number. Right. So... Does anybody have a hard and fast goal for their business? Like, I'm going to do this by that. 
But one of my things that I can set a date on it is to be, uh, you know, highly best-selling author and also have uh, high-end uh, seminars. Uh, so there's some measurable stuff in there. I just uh, don't know how to get there from here because I need a lot of assistance and I don't have the funds to pay for um, the professionals that could move my publishing and everything forward. And we're distinguishing a goal. We're always taking a look at a what by when. A what by when kind of goal. What kind of result we produce and by when. I had that in my executive summary. I had, we're going to have this many kind of clients by this time and have an income of this and a net income of that. And I didn't achieve it. Okay. Got it. <laughs> As a, okay. And so, and so you didn't achieve it. And what was the result of that? Well, we redid it, revised it for a couple of years, and the result is frustration and looking for a thing to do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, got it. Got it. So you had some frustration with it. And what's your relationship with goals now? Well, I still believe in goals. I okay. think that, um, I think stepping back and assessing where you are and you have to look at who thought this was a good idea. It's about going back to the beginning and looking at, your goals may be fine, and if you have a good idea and it's worth all of that, then you should continue pursuing it. But if you come to the realization that maybe at this time and place that isn't a good idea any longer, you need to look and be willing to change it. Thanks. I have a problem doing uh, how much, like, how many more clients do I need? I, that's really. Uh, in fact, throughout the whole actually sales industry, no matter what sales industry they're in, you're in, they're always going, you know, get your clients, this is what you need to get by then. Um, right. I think I measure mine differently. I think as long as I'm always getting new clients and they are always referring me, I am therefore successful. Okay. So I don't track it by numbers, because I found as soon as I tracked it by numbers, I became so frustrated that uh, it, it I, and I became very depressed over it <laughs> okay. if I felt if I didn't make it. So I found that as soon as I relaxed and, real, and really looked at what, what, what am I, who thought this was a good idea, why am I doing this, right. then I feel much better. Okay. About it, so I don't track numbers. Okay. But in your case, also, you, you know, a client doesn't mean X amount of dollars. Some clients pay you more right. than others. The packages are different costs, so it's also hard to measure by that. You can't say X number of clients because you could get an X number of repeat clients versus the expensive ones. Well, maybe it's not. A, maybe that's not your measure of success. People measure success in all kinds of different ways. It could be a monetary value or it could be something else. Success could be number of clients. It could be hits on a website, books sold, mm -hmm. bracelets made, classes given, you know, community events created. Success can be measured in any different way. You get to say, because it's your business. How, how would you measure success? Well, I think that's one of the things that I think we're having. I'm having to take another look at this and, and do another jump. My, for me right now, my success is because of perhaps such changes in our Medicare, Medicaid, and health structure. Uh, my success for at least the last part of this year is to help people understand that because I know my seniors, and I have a lot of senior clients, uh, it's really, they're terrified, and I want to take that fear away. So for me, that would be a success if my classes help people understand that, gives them the tools so that they can, uh, so that that, so that I educate them and, and show them where the tools are so that they can make a good decision for their life going forward. Got it. So for you, it's taking the fear away. Right. Got it. How would you measure? How would you know you've done that? that you've been in service of that? Um, oh, by how many people I help sign up for me, sign up for them to help me because the service I'm going to give them is preparing to be free. Got it. And if I make money off of it, fine. 
if I make money off of it? Great. Because for me, it's a community service because this is becoming a huge fear for my clients. It's enormous. Right. Well, how great. And it's totally in service of your vision of right. protecting families. So if that's the case, how would you measure that? By how many people, after I give the class, sign up to, to work with me one-on-one. -on -one because it's going to take me walking through each person individually, because each person is so individual, walking them through the steps right. and saying that this is what you need to do, and then them doing that, taking so that they have, I've educated them so they can take the control and do it. Right. So for you, it's classes to one-on-one -on -one so that they get a difference made. Right. Kind of. So you might measure it by classes given or numbers of folks who you do one-on-ones for. For me, it's going to be people I do one-on-ones for. Got it. And you, right. So that might be a measure of success for you. You just, thank you. I have a uh, new, new hero of the week. Um, a guy named, his name is Ted Leonard. He's, um, he, he was the ad guy for years. He told, told this kind of personal story about you know, being a young rep designer and starting out his own business and kind of struggling and getting up and struggling and getting up and finally um, he got up partnered up with somebody and they ran through, you know, they figured out what their strengths were, what they were doing wrong. They got rid of all, they stopped doing all the stuff they were doing for wrong. And they grew a business to $10 million, like annual profits in a short time, just based on the idea that doing great work and having happy people, you know, good products. And he's now, he, you know, he's, he's sold like, you know, his big ad agencies and joined others. But now he's a, kind of a consultant on his own to businesses about basically getting to, con to stop, you know, basically stop writing proposals and start writing contracts. Right. Know, people just like having the confidence to, um, you know, like to, to negotiate, you know, skillfully and to understand, you know, what your vision and all that is. But so making a very short story long. His um, key phrase for me was the virtuous cycle. Because we always talk about the vicious cycle, you know, the vicious cycle, this, the vicious cycle, it's like the virtuous cycle. And um, I don't want to take too much time, but basically he had it, um, he said, you know, the question is how do you get continuous supply of work with good fees and keep keep yourself in demand? And he said, step one is do the work. <laughs> Which is a lot of, you know, a lot of like us. It's a lot of this for this. And step two is develop your insights and your stories. And they're about how your work helps your clients succeed, which is, you know, really what your thing is. And step three, get the stories in front of prospects, which is, you know, also your, like, your classroom. And then step four, respond to inquiries, because he said, just do that. They will come, you know. And if, if someone's calling you, they're calling you because they need you. That's your negotiating position already. You know, it's not, you know, it's like they're not calling you to, um, you know, sort of budget you down and budget you down. They're calling you because they because they need you. But um, so what are you? So what are you taking away from this article take, for you? I'm take, for me. Um, first of all, it's that yes, you've got to just keep producing the work. There's like you think there isn't work because you've got to keep going and you've got to keep communicating with the people that you work best with. And to, if you're doing the work, you understand your strengths at your work. Nice. And then. Um, but here it says why the virtuous circle cycle is important. It says learning to think of your work is only the first step in the process of gaining influence and opportunity is critical to achieving success. No matter whether you work for yourself or someone else, the four steps of the virtuous cycle will attract the opportunities that fit just you to further your unique expert status. Obviously, you have a much more satisfying career if you're in demand. And then this, he says, I've read this column, all people, please note, it's just a continuation of my own virtuous cycle, which is what he does, you know, he writes. He writes you know, these things like this about these people. So, but I think for all of us, this idea of, you know, doing the work, connecting the story to how they help other people, right, which then makes you <coughs> just need to be wary of time. We're, oh, we started a little bit late, but we're a right. couple minutes after one. Okay, I'm going to let Bill close this out with the last question. Well, this is a revelation I've had in this meeting. And there's a book called Thinking Fast and Thinking Slow. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And when I look at vision and all of the things that we're doing, vision, you can think fast. I can look quickly at it and see it. Thinking slow, they say it's like solving a mathematical problem. You can't be distracted. You have to sit down and do it. 
Now, when we convert a vision to a goal, we're going from fast thinking to slow thinking. <clears throat> so much, so many of us don't have the time to devote to that slow thinking. We're distracted. We're right into doing the report and oh, the fall. Yes, what do you need? Blah, 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 and so forth. So I think there's some discipline, maybe, in the way of doing that. The execution piece. The execution piece yeah. is really uh, kind of jumping off the page. And, and it's a great way to circle around. So as, uh, as you may or may not know, this is a three-week series that I'm going to be leading. The second week is about taking your goals and, and implementing them and getting them into action in round time frames. So my invitation for you is to take what you saw for yourself this week, and everybody took away something different. But my invitation for you is to take away and take a look at what goal you would like to produce and in what kind of time frame in service of your business. And next week what we'll do is we'll tease that out a little bit more and start creating a structure for delivering on that goal. The intention behind the entire series is that this be a springboard for what's next for your business so that it give you some clarity and some action steps to start creating the momentum, right? When the roller coaster starts going, it's always slow when it's climbing up the hill. What we're doing in this three-week series is climbing the hill. Thanks for being present. Thanks for sharing what's going on in your business. So the invitation is take a look and create what the next goal to move your business forward is and in what time frame you'd like to create it. Bring that back next week and let's start to create some structures to deliver on it. You bet. That's it. And I'll be around for a few minutes if folks have questions. Thanks, Charlie. You bet. Thanks. 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 And cut. <laughs> <laughs>